All right, so coming up in this episode, we've got a new beer from Portland, Maine. And I'm going to tell you what, that beer right now is on my radar. It is delicious. Um, Dave, we also have a local beer that's, uh, that we're going to talk about from... Wolf's Hollow. Wolf's Hollow. I love Wolf's Hollow. They've been Great around place. forever. District 6, one of my favorite beers. And then the third beer we're going to talk about today has been around for a little while, but it has quickly taken over at least the Capital District, as far as I know, in supremacy of being everywhere. So that's what we're going to talk about here in our very first episode. All right, Dave, let's do this. It's going to be awesome. The Capital Brew Podcast with 20 North Dave and Nick Lee. What's brewing in the 518? I'm here with Dave from 20 North. 20 North Dave. That's how you were in my phone. Dave from, yeah, Dave from 20 North. <laughs> I get it everywhere. Yeah. So, um, obviously, my name is Nick. Start with a little bit about your background and how you got into the uh, bar industry. All right. Um, back out of college, I didn't really have a steady job. I did a little work in construction and found that it was not, you know, wasn't my cup of tea. So, a friend of mine was working at the Bayou in Glenville. Uh, and offered me a job, you know, uh, waiting tables. That's how I got my start. And uh, I eventually built up my hours, and then a friend from the Bayou owned their own tavern here in Schenectady called Rups's Tavern and uh, asked me to come help him out. And uh, next thing you know, I was managing it. And uh, a friend of mine and myself were both working for that person and another person, and uh, we decided that maybe it was time we did our own thing. Yeah. You know, we both spent at least at that point maybe close to 10 years in the bar industry and thought we knew everything. Obviously not. <laughs> but uh, got together and decided that we thought we could do it. And uh, in 2008, we opened up, and it's been pretty good since. Yeah, man. Um, I've been coming here since 2008. I remember a friend of mine, Derek, said, hey, uh, Dave from Upsis has got a, a new bar that's opening up. And uh, we got to go check it out. So it was uh, me, uh, Derek, my friend Lauren. We came down here, and uh, I've been coming ever since. Yeah. I mean, day one, I remember describing to Eric that he's like, you know, who are you doing this with? I'm like, this guy's been coming here since day one. I'm <laughs> yeah. like, you got to know who this is. <laughs> well, Eric, he's, he's always quiet. He's always back in the kitchen. He is. Um, I've definitely popped back there a couple times. I think I've met him briefly a few times. But, yeah, for sure. Um so, yeah, we've got a couple of beers that we're going to discuss today. We've got um, at least two, um, three, actually. We're going to talk first about, I'm kind of super interested. One of my favorite breweries here uh, locally is Wolf's Hollow. Uh, it's actually, what, maybe two and a half miles from here, three miles tops? I would say, yeah, right down, literally right, right down State Street, Route 5, you know, maybe three, four miles. But, yeah, I mean, right down the road. Yeah. I mean, it's a straight shot. Yeah. I love their, what is it, their District 6? District 6 IPA. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. It's it's, it's hugely strong, popular. Strong beer. Yeah, it's hugely <laughs> popular. Tell they, the, a lot of their beers tend to be a little bit stronger. The one that we had today is called the... The Battle of 1669. Do we know what happened for the Battle of 1669? I don't... To be honest with you, it might just be some sort of odd reference that probably doesn't mean anything to any of any history. Uh, but it is a white IPA with spices. I'm not sure exactly what those spices are, but you definitely notice it when you take a sip. Okay. Yes, um, I tried. Uh, there, it's, it is a spicy beer. It's a light beer. Uh, since I guess, hence the name White IPA. Also, I believe it's unfiltered, which is I, kind of the new, the new thing. The for hazy IPAs. beers, yeah. Yeah, you know the unfiltered. They, you know they don't bother taking out all the sediment. You know, I I don't. I don't really know the reason why, but it's gained a lot of popularity. I don't either. Um, I, it's actually what was it last year, the year before, that, the summer before? It was like it became a summer thing to have these these uh, yes. these hazy beers. Actually, yes. somebody who makes a very good hazy beer, New Belgium, the Voodoo was it Purple Haze? No, Voodoo Purple Haze? Haze was something else. Was another <laughs> uh, Abita, Abita, I think was uh, was a Purple Haze back in the day. I don't, I mean, they did, they okay. also did Turbo Dog. All right, I think they did, but they were like a Louis, Louisiana beer. I want to say. I can't remember the. Uh, it's Voodoo Haze something, and it's so good. Um, it's one of my favorite Haze beers. Um, but yeah, this one was it was uh, it was very light. It didn't feel as strong as a lot of the beers that that Wolf's Hollow makes. I would say that uh, in particular, the spices kind of mask the, the hoppiness. I would say you know many uh, IPAs are, have a tendency to be very you know especially now people just load them up with hops. I, I want to say those spices either cut it somewhat or maybe because of the spices they use less 
less hops. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. I should probably ask. It wasn't a super hoppy. We actually, um, well, if we, we get down to that point, uh, I would love to actually start inviting um, some of the local brewers here in, in the area. I'm sure they would they would really appreciate an, an opportunity to explain yeah. a lot of the things that I won't be able to explain. <laughs> or I. Know. Basically, this podcast is a couple of guys that, that love beer, somebody who's in the industry, and somebody who, who, who I think of myself as a connoisseur. My my personal background, which I probably should have gotten into right off the rip, was uh, I have a background in radio. Um, I, for the last five or six years, worked for a, a local uh, uh, gym uh, car dealership and their marketing department uh, creating uh, creative content. So. That's where I come in, but other than that, I just I, I drink beer on a daily, so I like to think of myself as somewhat of a connoisseur. Yeah, I would say we have a lot of those <laughs> <laughs> here and everywhere. Um, so yeah, I think I think a good uh, a good use for this Wolf's Hollow uh, Battle of sixteen sixty nine is um, it's a great summertime beer. You, want, you know, uh, not it's something that you would maybe drink out in the boat. Drink, you know. Uh, it's uh, I would say it's unique. You yeah. know, uh, where everybody in the in the that are making IPAs have a tendency to run in one direction. They decided to do something a little different to differentiate themselves. And I'll definitely say Wolf's Hollow puts out a great product. And uh, people, one of the things people really like when they say to me, you know, hey, what do you have local? They don't even ask me a particular beer or a particular genre of beers. It'll just be, what do you have local? And having them, because they, they, of a lot of the other beer companies that have sprouted up, they seem to have a very strong following that mm-hmm. other ones, I mean, I'm not saying the other ones aren't as good or not good, but I, I've found that they have a very specific uh, following. And like when, as soon as I mention Wolf's Hollow, it almost doesn't matter. Like, yeah. We'll take whatever yeah. it is. You know what I mean? And that's, that's great for us to have a local beer. It's great for them to have that kind of uh, following. Yeah. You know, I don't know what kind of business they do out there, but I don't think they have a restaurant of any uh, t- type. Yeah. So a lot of people, when they go out there, it's just, just beer. Yeah. But, like, somebody wants to go out eat and still get Wolf Hollow, you know, there's a lot of places around here that, that do carry it, and they carry it not just because, it's like, it's local, but it's, it's good, you know, yeah. on its own merit, not just because it's local. For sure. We're going to put a pin in that conversation because I want to bring that up again uh, when we get towards the end. I think that we're very blessed in the area we are. And maybe it's all over the, the country. I know there's a lot of microbrews. That they've, they've obviously blown up in the last oh, you know 15 man. years. Um, so I think we're very blessed in the area that we're at. And like I said, we'll put a pin in that conversation. We'll come back to it. Um, I want to talk about the next beer that um, I'm I'm loving. It's the first time I've ever had it. I have, what is what is the the brewery? This Lone is a, Pine. Lone Pine's the brewery. The brewing the brewing company. They're yeah. out of Portland, Maine, I believe. Or if yeah, there it's a Maine. I just got back from Maine. Yeah, I'm it disappointed that yes, went. it is a Maine brewing company, yeah. which is uh, Maine, especially Portland in general, is is especially well known yeah. for its brew pubs. I oh believe, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, it's per capita probably the most densely populated brew pub city in America. Yeah. Something like that. I was just in Kenny Bunk. They have the original shipyard. Yeah, is which came there. out a long time ago. Yeah, like, oh yeah. It was way shipyard was way, way, way out in front of we all got these shipyard harpoon. Yeah, harpoon. Um, yeah. Even to an extent, uh, 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 Sam Adams. So I mean, um, yeah. There's, there's a, the Northeast is just littered. Oh my God! With you can't great swing breweries. Your arms now. Yeah, <laughs> swing your arms at a brewery. Good brewery. So I wish, I, I wish I, I was actually. I, um, my girlfriend's sister lives in Maine. I take many a trips out to Maine, um, and that's one of the things I try to do is, 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 is visit a different brewery. Like I want to say, when I was working at the Bayou, and this was prior to 2008, Harpoon was a big beer there. It yeah. was a big beer in, uh, in that area. For sure. Uh, Lone Pine is relatively new. Yep. Like I want to say, they are, you know, popular within the last year, maybe year, two years. Okay. And the reason, like uh, my partner Eric, we mentioned before, uh, his parents live in uh, Port Elizabeth, mm-hmm. and uh, he and he and his brother, my friend Pete, spend a lot of time traveling back and forth. So they get a they get a really good opportunity to sample a lot of main beers and i remember that's actually that's the reason we have the lone pine on Mm -hmm. is because when they went up to visit their parents this brewery was new they went and visited and they came back and said hey listen these people got it going on we should get this yeah you know so we got the lone pine the pale ale yeah which is not an india pale ale it's uh it's crisper Mm -hmm. less uh less hoppy hoppy, you know your face hoppiness which one again it's what a lot of the breweries are, are running towards is like how much hop can you stuff into this beer yeah. but these guys went more a traditional like a like an, a, a pale ale like, you know a traditional pale ale from England yeah you know uh, 
not not worrying about stuffing you or, or crushing you with all kinds of hops, hops and, and trying to make you remember all these fourteen flavors, yeah. different kind of hops they put yeah. in there. <laughs> they went with them, which I I like because you can it. If someone doesn't like an IPA, because some people get turned yeah. off, not a lot, but no. some people get turned off, I can offer that as a as a summary, like a crisper, smoother, yeah. more to their liking beer, and they'd say, "Oh, well, yes, not so hoppy, not yeah. you know, it's it's filtered, you know, yeah. so it's clear, you know, it's not unfiltered, and has a bunch of sediment in it, and uh, you know, they they came back and said, "Listen, this is a, this is a beer for us because it covers a lot more ground. Mm-hmm. We already have several IPAs on." Why don't we try something here to cover a little more ground? Yeah. And it is—it's a quality beer, yes. like, you know. And, and you know that they—that made that port, the Lone Pine has to compete with the cream of the crop yeah. in terms of there's some breweries up there that are well established, doing great business, and they got to and they, you know they they, they, it's like yeah they they had they had to step up in a, in a sea of great oh yeah beer places you know you know I've been there yeah it's like you said you can't you can't throw a stone without hitting a brewery. Or at least passing two or three breweries before that stone lands, yeah. and uh, they have great beer. They know what they're doing up in the in the northeast, up in Maine. Fantastic city oh, as yeah. well. I mean, just oh, so much fun, yeah. and so there's much a, to do. We there was a um, there's a little island that we took a ferry to, and we rented bikes, and we rode around this. Really, I want to say it was Pikes Island, something along those lines. I wish I remembered. I sadly don't know enough about Maine oh, to tell you. Dad, do you do you get a chance to get up there? I go occasionally when I can, but usually we stay right in Portland. And, yeah, you know, it's basically every time it's a brew pub tour. You yeah. know, we're not really going out like in the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's trying to get in as many, it. get in as many places as we can over there. Yeah, you know, because there's so many. Uh, when we get you know? done, I'll show you some photos of uh, yeah. this past. It was the last weekend or the weekend before I was out there. Fair enough. Oh, uh, dude, it was. It, it's beautiful. You can rent scooters and ride around town. Uh, we had a great time. Sort of like Nantucket. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, know, yeah. Or, or uh, Martha's Vineyard. Also, yeah. You know. For sure. For sure. And it, there's a lot of we went, we actually rode scooters to President uh, Bush's. Excuse me, family uh, summer home. Yeah, I knew that. And was he was there. there. His birthday was there. Really? Yeah. So he was there when we were there taking photos, standing partying outside of his house. Like weird. Like, hey. Yeah, partying with the press. I was actually, you know what? It's funny. I'm, I'm surprised I didn't get arrested. Uh, my girlfriend's all like taking photos of like the house and how beautiful it is, and I'm taking photographs of all like the secret, uh, the, the um, oh man, secret service that was there. Yeah. So um, anyway, to get back on beer. Uh, our third beer that we uh, tested today. And by the way, I would like to say um, out of the three beers that we tested today, you asked, you asked me which one uh, did I actually want a pint of, and I actually went with the Lone Pine. Yeah. Just to give you an idea of, 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 of the quality of beer that is. Don't get me wrong. Um, I love Wolf's Hollow, and um, I would, you know, maybe if we were sitting outside on the back patio, I took the Wolf's Hollow. Uh, but this next beer is another one of my favorites that... Um, um, it's funny, you, 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 everywhere you go, I just ate at the Man of Kent not too long ago. Oh, yeah. And they had way out there. there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, um, it's That's Fiddlehead. A great place. Yeah. Fiddlehead, uh, you know, in, right in Shelburne, Vermont, in, right, right, uh, right before you get to Burlington. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if this is true, you know, propagating stories about people, but, you know, uh, apparently these guys, you know, these guys were sitting around doing something that's legal in other states, not this one. <laughs> And decided, well, you know, we love beer. We love, you know, we love hanging out, doing stuff that's legal in other states. <laughs> Why don't we just, you know, brew our own beer? Yeah. And they went and they did it. And let me tell you, uh, they came up with a fantastic... They were one of the first to do the unfiltered New England style. Yeah. Uh, that beer outsells pretty much any beer that we have on tap, two to one. It out, it's our biggest selling beer, bigger than Miller Lite, bigger yeah. than anything else we sell. Like two to one, it's yeah. it's amazing, and these guys really don't do much in the way of you know, uh, you know, putting it out there on a the market. They just basically say, "Here's our product. Mm-hmm. If you like it, awesome, great, yeah. buy more." And let me tell you, we buy a lot. It's it's amazing, and I will say this: it has merit. I, I will liken it to if you anybody out there like has been a fan of Sip of Sunshine, which I think is a great IPA, good drinking IPA. Uh, I want to say it's it's similar to that, you know. Uh, I don't know what the magic is, you know. There's, I mean, there's so many IPAs out there yeah. to choose from, but it seems that this they they just came together with a combination of whatever they did and hit it right on the head because honestly, I've I, I've never seen a beer take hold. And all I mean, this is now I'm all, it's 20 years that I've been doing this, yeah. you know, doing this bar business. I've never seen anything like this fiddlehead yeah. blow up. Like, 
I mean, everyone. It's like every table. Yeah. Every table wants it, and I'm, I'm saying it's it's great. Yeah. Uh, I, I just don't. I don't. I don't know. What